Today we're looking at the Prime 91 Steven Jad. I reviewed his base and his mid on the channel, so it's only right we got his Prime done. High, medium, 3-star, three 3-star. Three can play center mid or CDM. You can see here he's got fantastic finishing, shot power, long shots. Absolutely outstanding long pass, short pass. Good ball control. Okay composure as well. We've gone for a shadow, and I'll explain a little bit more at the end. We've got no decent traits, unfortunately. So we will be talking about Kemp Styles pricing, what thought of the card, best positions, and much more at the end of the review on Footbin. That being said, let's go jump into some gameplay and have a word from today's sponsor first. Are you tired of playing sweat teams like this? Make sure you go to Alt Knight, select Foot, select Foot 23 coins, choose which console and how many coins you'd like to buy, select your payment method, and don't forget to add code Nanic for 6% off on all orders. So with Steven Jarrett today playing in a 4 triple 2 He's been playing in like a CDM slash box-to-box -box drive forward roll. Very similar how we reviewed our prime David Beckham. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out to see how it works. But he's going to be basically our driving force from deep. If we make a tackle, he's going to be the main guy orchestrating the attack with long passes in and much more. So do get Gerard here on the ball. Oh, a bit of a heavy touch. Not a problem. I'm going to keep the pressure on. Good tackle and nowhere to go, unfortunately. So his job is basically going to be, when we win the wall back, transition into attack. Try and drive forward as well with that pace. If he gets a chance to go through on goal, obviously try and take a shot and score. But mainly just trying to do the long through ball. So we win the ball here. Play it in to Gerard now. Push him up into the space. All right, counter attack. Win that ball back like we said. Now we're going to drive Gerard into that space. Again, a little layoff. Back to Gerard. See if we can do that long through ball. Oh, he's a bit slow on the dribble, I have to admit. Do find him here though. Lovely pass. Got options now. That's got to be a foul, surely. How's that not a foul? Gerard on oh, no counter attack. Here we go. Driving full stride. Got options left and right. Jarzinho. Lovely ball in. Jarzinho and a great save. And we get our own goal there. Jarzinho should have probably buried that himself anyways. He does celebrate. And that's his main job today. A couple of things I've noticed him with him. He's a little bit clunky on the ball. He feels a bit heavy compared to his mid. Yeah, he's on team press, so we've got Gerald barely any space as we drive. You see, there's a bit slow going into speed, but once he's at full speed, he's very, very untouchable in that sense. But our opponent is on constant pressure the whole time. So what's happening is, as soon as we win this ball, you can see there he's just emptying the space on us, and there's just nowhere to go. And Gerard is struggling in this situation in that sort of sense. We do get him down the line here, though. That's exactly where we want him there. Gerard in that space. Little play across, closer, good shot, and it's wide. How have we not scored there? So in terms of Leicester dribbling, getting that situation, I'm noticing Jared isn't the best, which is a bit of a shame. It is down to his boy type, which we'll cover a bit later on footbin. But sitting in these pockets here, once we win that ball, our opponent seems to be getting all the lucky rebounds and everything. Good pressure. Keeping that pressure on. Can't quite get the tackle off there. Getting a counter attack underway. So again, like immediately full press, nowhere to go. Not a problem. We can play our way out of it. But for someone that isn't great elastic dribbling, for example, their bad pass. Good win from Gerard though. Now we played it into the space, play it around into the pocket. Back to Gerard. He's got options there. Good ball in. But back to Gerard again, sitting in this role. Drive it in to Jarzinho. So driving now. Ah, oh, try to beat the offside track. Do we get a bit of luck there? Again, bad touch. You can see, though, just in terms of someone doing full pressure on you, he's a bit slow getting out of transition. Yeah, in the space is where we want him. But Govu peeling off. That is a terrible pass from me. That is not on him. That's me. I win the ball. Let's go. Gerard in that position we want him to be. He's got options left and right. Going to drive in. Bit of a hard through ball, but absolutely perfectly weighted. Ah, easy pass to Gerard, who tucks it away. And this is what I was saying about this card. He can play those diagonal through balls into the space. We're waiting for him to move forward. We're holding down LB or L1 to get him to run into the space. And we've got ourselves a really easy cutback into basically open goal into the bottom corner there. I think this card personally is more suited as a cam rather than a box-to-box. -box. Just because of how, how much slower he is, shall I say, in terms of his mid or his base. Push Gerald forward if we can. Because our opponent's been doing all-out pressure, he's already getting tired. So the space is going to start opening up just like they are now. So Gerard in this space here. Can he get through? He can't. Can he keep going? No. Keep that pressure on. Good work effort there from him. And a great pass in. And that's going to be another assist there from Gerard. And this is what I was saying with his passing. 
If you're going to go all out pressure, you just need to hold the pressure, keep dealing with it, dealing with it, dealing with it, and you get the space. And we managed to win the ball back from hard effort and passing. I think we've seen enough gameplay, to be honest with you. I think I played enough with him. This is one of the games that you've seen. I played a few more off stream as well, off camera, as it were. So you can see here, in terms of dribble, he's not the best. He is very slow going into transition in terms of running. From going from zero into full speed, he's rapid. Once he gets to full speed, it's getting him there is the problem. But his shooting is very good. We only had one shot of him. I did a couple power shots off camera as well. And a couple of them went in. Some didn't. But his finishing is good. His passing is the thing that impresses me the most. You can see here. Lovely diagonal passes that I was mentioning. These diagonal passes split open the defense every single time. Let's go jump onto Footbin. So he's 400,000 coins on the market. And like I mentioned, his pace was the big deal for me today. In terms of his mid, his mid is 80, but a little bit less in shooting and passing. And compared to his base, who is way less. His base, of course, is the worst version of the card. I personally think I'm leaning more towards his mid than his prime. His 90 passing, his 90 shooting is unbelievable. But the pace difference, I know it's only three, but it seems to make a big deal. Especially with someone doing constant pressure that you saw in today's video. Because he's got this average body type and this really low agility and balance. If you're going to play him as a cam, I honestly recommend maybe going for an engine just to boot it up. We went for a shadow today to keep him on controlled. And I normally like to go for lengthy, but I wanted to test him out as a box to box today. So I had to go for a shadow. Obviously, if you're on new gen, you could look at doing architect. But if you're going to play him as a cam, I would personally put an engine on him or even a maestro. Just to boost up his passing and his finishing in general was very, very good for a midfielder. He offers you so much. But you could also go for a finisher as well to boost up the agility and balance as well as a finishing. But the problem is his pace. Going into zero to full speed is a little bit concerning. Especially if you were to make him lengthy, that would really highlight that problem on new gen. So I do think that could be a problem. But overall, you could go for a Hawk as well if you're on old gen, as well as Hunter, if you can't afford a Hunter. I did like the card. There are rumors flying around at the minute he's coming out as an SBC. So if you're watching this and the SBC is out, his price may be a little bit lower or much lower, depending on how cheap the SBC is. But if you're tempted to do him, definitely look at grinding. I'll probably bring out a video on how to grind the SBC if it hasn't come out already. But I would look at maybe his mid, unless the price is around 200,000 coins, then I would be looking to buy him then. But I do think his mid is just that bit better. He feels a bit better on the ball. It's just something about the car. But his agility and balance, as you can see, there's a little bit higher on his mid as well. So it is something to consider. If you have any more questions about this card or any other card, comment down below. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that like button, subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one.